A school in Texas is using AI to teach the three R's. No more one size fits all lessons. Janet Chamlin has tonight's Eye in America. They're pioneering education's new frontier. Every click, every keystroke at Austin's Alpha School is guided by artificial intelligence. So right now is considered for school time. Students like eight-year-old Alina Boyce spend only two hours in the morning on science, math, and reading, working at their own speed using personalized AI-driven software. Right now, at my age level, I'm supposed to be fourth grade. Okay. But um, science, I'm in like sixth, seventh grade. You are. Yeah. I'm very curious to see if you can slingshot this. Adults in the classroom are called guides, not teachers, and earn six-figure salaries. Their job is to encourage and motivate. Can an algorithm replace the expertise of someone like yourself? I don't think it's replacing. I think it's just working in tandem. Afternoons are different. Students tackle projects teaching financial literacy and public speaking. Life skills, founder Mackenzie Price says, are invaluable. What advantage does the learning that you're employing here have over traditional schools? There is such a huge advantage when students can be met at the level and pace of learning that is right for them. Price was not an educator before starting the school in 2014. There are now 16 campuses and big backers. The education secretary visited last month. You're turning the learning over to a laptop. What about the importance of an educator in a child's life? So our guides are not teaching academic content, mm -hmm. but they are connecting. In fact, every week, every one of our students gets 30 minutes of one-on-one -on -one concentrated time with their guides. And during the workshops in the afternoons, they are connecting and interacting in a group experience. That progress isn't cheap. Tuition at Austin's Alpha School starts at $40,000 a year. How is this applicable to standard education? We recognize that there is a huge mountain of uh, challenges that come in a large public system. So what I hope that Alpha can be is an example, an inspiration, and help families understand that this model of education is something that can work. While the school says its students test in the top 1% on standardized assessments, AI models have been met with skepticism by educators who say they're unproven. Though there's no disputing students like Smith Adrian are engaged. So far, you think what? Amazing. Reshaping learning with artificial intelligence at the head of the class. For I in America, I'm Janet Shamlian in Austin. Oh, Artificial intelligence is quickly becoming a part of our daily lives, whether in the office or the classroom. For tonight's In Depth, CBS's Tom Hansen reports on one medical school that has become the first in the nation to incorporate AI fully into its doctor training program. Medical students are well versed in the rigorous demands required of their education, but new artificial intelligence tools like ChatGPT EDU from OpenAI are designed to help. The Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai is the first medical school in the nation to grant access to the platform to all of its MD and graduate students. We're going through a blood vessel, right, and through your wrist. Like Ferris Gulamali uses it to prep for surgeries and improve his bedside manner when explaining complex diagnoses to patients. Do you think that using AI shortened down the time it would have taken you had you not had that tool? It really helped at least reframe the explanation. OpenAI has collaborated with universities and med schools like Mount Sinai to ensure robust safeguards are in place to protect student and patient privacy. I think in medicine and in health in particular, it's essential that students learn how to use AI and how to use it safely. So Leah Belsky is OpenAI's VP and general manager of education. She equates the impact of AI in the 21st century workplace to that of email and internet access in the 1990s. Where does AI fall on the scale of one of these transformative tools that will be integrated? It helps them to learn faster. It helps them to discover new areas of knowledge. It helps them to explore more deeply. And so what we're really focused is making sure that there is equitable access to AI. Vivek Kampa relies on the tech as support in complex research projects. It gives me a pseudo-clinician-styled mentor who I can ask questions to at any time of day 
um, as well as a pseudo software engineering collaborator with whom I can debug problems that I'm having. For associate professor Benjamin Glicksberg, these AI tools can be a real time saver. Now as an educator, our time are limited. You know, as much as I want to be available to students, unfortunately, it doesn't always line up. So this is like a really nice facilitator. With full Growing with it as opposed to fearing this thing and holding it in this scary sense of it's going to replace us, uh, I think is really instrumental. It's changed everything. It's changed uh, how I think. It's changed how I interact with students. It's changed how I mentor and even try to innovate myself. When you're An innovation in medicine that helps both doctor and patient. Tom Hansen, CBS News, New York. More than half of those who took part in a new Pew Research poll said they believe artificial intelligence will erode creative thinking. But in many industries, the advanced technology is becoming essential. In tonight's In Depth, CBS's Meg Oliver traveled to Ohio State University to look at a first in the nation initiative to make sure the next generation of graduates speak AI. Have you ever taken a class in AI? I have not, no. Are you excited to try it here? Yeah. College freshmen Ashley Kroll and Brooklyn Baldwin are part of something new. This fall, the Ohio State University will infuse artificial intelligence lessons into every major. As a bio major, you have to take a lot of hard science classes, math classes, so there's going to be struggles along the way that, you know, I'm not going to be able to access a tutor all the time, so I think AI will be a little bit helpful. The goal is that the class of 2029 will graduate fluent in both their major and AI. Use the AI to ask for suggestions for the Kevin skill. Richards is an assistant language skills. professor. What are you hoping your students learn from your class in particular? I hope that they learn how to use it effectively for for you know, brainstorming, for organizing uh, thoughts, but they don't replace a sort of their, their, their critical thought with it. All freshmen are required to take a course in generative AI in multiple workshops aimed at real world applications to help them master the technology. In the last decade, the number of job listings asking for AI skills has soared by more than 600% in the U.S. And in the last year alone, the number of AI themed job postings has increased by more than 100%. It's a thing that really helps you do your job better. Luis Van On is the CEO of Duolingo, the app known for teaching foreign languages. Having something in your resume that says something about AI would give you an advantage because a lot of our work is, is being done this way. AI hasn't replaced any full-time positions here, but it took the company more than a decade to create its first 100 courses. By using AI, they created nearly 150 new ones in the last year alone. It allows us to go faster and it allows us to create high quality content at a much higher pace. I would say like try to pursue those. At OSU, they're hoping threading AI into their curriculum will help their students' resumes stand out. Do you think taking this class will give you a leg up versus other graduates? There's a lot that I didn't know about before taking this class and if there's other college students that haven't been offered a class like this and haven't been told these new AI tools, then maybe have a leg up in that sense. An advantage in an ever-evolving tech space. Meg Oliver, CBS News, Columbus, Ohio.